today we are going to learn all about how to select the right material during design design whether it's a product design or tool design or spm or robotics any design and this is one of the important pillars of design now here we are going to understand the most commonly used materials which are those important materials you have to focus on these materials friends one is cast iron second is steel third is aluminium fourth is plastic and fifth is rubber that's it any field whether you are you working in automotive field or engineering field or machinery or oil and natural gas whatever is field or piping industry these five materials you are going to deal with understand the example of a car body components the material is steel dashboard instrument panel the material is plastic piston clutch housing gearbox housing the material is aluminium tires floor mat trim area the material is rubber so this is how we have to understand and in this particular if we consider all these five materials what you have to study right from density so these points we are going to understand the advantages and limitations also and the we can say the properties so the first material is cast iron and this is one important question generally asked during interview contents cast iron contents so the main elements in cast iron iron carbon silicon manganese sulfur and phosphorus this is the content so general value you must know and carbon percentage is very very important at least you should know the carbon percentage and even though some sometimes it is not possible to remember all the values but at least content you should know that is silicon manganese sulfur and phosphorus then the various we can say strengths ultimate tensile strength this is the range compressive strength then compressive strength in case of cast iron is higher than steel that we have to understand then hardness it is in bhn brinell hardness number types of cast iron gray cast iron is the most popular material then spheroidal graphite iron spheroidal graphite iron is having property in between steel and cast iron steel is having high tensile strength cast iron is having high compressive strength so in between sg iron is having more tensile strength than cast iron steel is having poor castability property cast iron is having excellent castability property so sg iron is having better castability property than steel so sg iron this is also called as a nodular cast iron and all components you can see where there is a vibration or shock loads are there and when the complex geometry is there then you have to go for sg iron material so steering components axle components all components the material is sg iron and gray cast iron engine block engine head gearbox housing all such components they are made up of gray cast iron then white cast iron and malleable cast iron these are the main types of cast iron if you understand the advantages of cast iron low cost excellent castability property means you can take or produce any critical shape good machinability and here one important thing have you observed machining of cast iron and steel so when you are machining cast iron generally you will find that no coolant is required because the graphite in this particular material it is in the free form so that acts as a coolant the next point is good compressive strength then available as per the required shape and size very important point see when you are completing your project work or your drawing is ready you have to understand the other area about the machining or manufacturing part as well when you are in the design stage and when you have to understand how are you are going to procure the material so if it is a cast iron material you can procure the material as per the desired shape and size which is not which is difficult in generally steel in case of steel you have to procure the material as per the availability means whatever is the size available in the market and in case of cast iron how this is possible it is possible because you can go for a particular pattern that is made up of thermocol and from that thermocol you can procure the casting 
as per the desired shape and size so here in this case what is the advantage you are reducing the material you are reducing your machining time and the cost next point intricate shapes possible yes when it is a cast iron any critical shape can be produced now let us understand the limitations of this particular material cast iron it's a brittle material careful handling is required low finish compared to steel that we have to understand then prone to rusting yes possibility of rusting is there and heavy weight so in case of conventional methods generally this is avoided then applications as we studied engine block engine head gearbox housing clutch housing many applications then coming to the next point that is steel and it's a vast difference and one more important question generally asked during interview what is the difference between cast iron and steel so these are the important we can say points you have to answer which are those points carbon percentage so it may start with 0.03 up to 1.2 percent so as per the carbon percentage there are again types like low carbon steel medium carbon steel and high carbon steel so mild steel most commonly used in the industry which are those areas right from fastener various back plates support plates fixture structure or we can say fabrication everywhere you can see mild steel then medium carbon steel you have to understand that application most of the forging components the material like flanges we can say various uh, shafts the material is uh, medium carbon steel and high carbon steel whether it's a drill or reamer like that then you have to understand about the raw material availability i told you raw material available in case of cast iron that is possible with any shape and size which is not possible in case of steel then strength high strength in tensile strength in steel high compressive strength in cast iron surface quality better in steel then cast iron it is lesser than this then specific gravity very small difference is there 7.2 gram per centimeter cube in case of cast iron 7.8 gram per centimeter cube in case of steel then types of steel i told you about it's a huge subject friends but what you have to focus mainly low carbon steel medium carbon steel and high carbon steel then alloy steel alloy steel various again different types tool steel and stainless steel we can say these are the broad uh, four categories but the subject is very vast and what you have to understand again what are those alloying elements and what is the uh, property you are going to achieve when you are adding a particular specific material then advantages high strength better accuracy better surface finish and thin sections can be made compared to cast iron that is possible again limitations heavy weight raw material as per the market availability and difficult to cast difficult to cast means casting of steel generally you will find problems of shrinkage that is a defect the next point is aluminum now you must have observed that most of the compounds are now being replaced from steel to aluminum the main reason is weight weight constraint one more is that uh, we can say it is not affected by other atmospheric conditions and all that is one important thing and advantages of aluminum first of all light in weight friends three important materials you must know the density you can not note down density of aluminum 2.7 gram per centimeter cube density of cast iron just reverse it what is that 7.2 so once you remember one other you can find it out and still that is 7.8 gram per centimeter cube so excellent castability property it has very good castability property and that is the reason you can produce any critical shape in aluminum excellent machinability is there excellent surface finish is achieved and corrosion resistant but there are some limitations of aluminum so since the material is soft there is a limitation less strength then careful handling is required then high cost this also we are going to understand costing part because that is very very important next applications engine head gearbox housing clutch housing 
intake manifold, exhaust manifold, piston. Right. So, friends, uh, thank you for joining this session.